Laporte family from Texas has written in. Um, uh, we have an 11 year old who wants to know what height do you have to be? What's the ideal height to be able to dunk? Wow, that's a that's a question. When I, when I got my first dunk, I was about five ten. Five five nine. I was coming out of the eighth grade, and but I say ideal height would probably be like six six one. Okay. Um, and then we've had um, some other families want to know: um, Will you guys get to finish your season? I know that's that's a big unknown right now. I'm I'm messaging the NBA asking them if we're gonna finish. The season. <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> and then um, as a kid. Um, uh, we've had another family ask, what was your favorite team? Who was the team you pulled for growing up? Uh, I was a Lakers fan and a Bulls fan. Um, Oklahoma didn't have a team. So uh, it was no like team when I was growing up that I could really cheer for. So I was a Bulls fan because my mom really liked Michael Jordan. And so it's kind of like the automatic team that I liked. And then the Lakers was just my favorite team, like that was my decision of a team. And I was like, I'm a Lakers fan. When Kobe and Shaq and Derek Fisher and Robert Ory, Rick Fox, all those guys, I was obsessed. They were a good team. Um, do you have any tips for any of our kiddos that are watching that might want to follow in your footsteps of, of playing college ball and playing professional ball? Um, what, how would you tell them to prepare for that? Well, first of all, I would tell them just to clear this up, it's never going to go exactly how you think it's going to go. So it's never like this. It's always going to be like <laughs> all over the place. And I, I think that once you, once you come to terms with that, with failure and with not doing as good as you want to all the time, that's when I think that your window for greatness will really open up a lot because uh, that was another thing I kind of had to teach myself was don't let everything revolve on around like one bad day or one bad workout or one bad game, you know, because that can spill over into five bad games because you're still worried about the first one. And so even when you're shooting, like, I used to really get upset when I would miss like three in a row. And I'm like, come on, like, you got to make that. And then I found myself still mad at the shot before that on my next shot. And so it was just spilling over. But, yeah, once you come in terms of that, I think it'll be a lot easier. Um, since you mentioned that uh, you uh, grew up as a Chicago Bulls fan and that your mother was a huge Jordan fan, um, uh, we've had some families want to know, are you watching The Last Dance? Have you seen it, um, the, the series that's, that's going on about Jordan and the Bulls? Oh, um, <laughs> I dyed my hair before The Last Dance started coming on. So I don't want to hear the Dennis Rodman inspiration comments, even though the inspiration was still kind of there and I did it. But yeah, I've, I've been watching it and it's been very enlightening because it's a lot of stuff about Mike and about that team is being said on there that I didn't know that a lot of us didn't know. And it's awesome to be able to, to see it now. And those highlights, man, it's, I love when they do like the, 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 the montage of like Bulls highlights. Mm -hmm. uh, I could watch that all day. Yeah, there's still some shots I know that Jordan pulled off in those championships that you still see in commercials today because they were just so incredible. Um, along those lines, I mean, what was it like the first time you met one of your basketball idols? Um, I'm sure you had a few, you know, from growing up, but on, and during your time in the NBA, um, you probably crossed paths with some of those guys. Yeah, let me think. The first time I got starstruck in the NBA, uh, well, actually, okay. Well, first time I got starstruck in the NBA was before the season even started when D Wade walked into. We were playing pickup one day in preseason, and we're playing, we're playing, and then they're like, "Oh, hey, look who just walked in!" And I'm like standing here, so I'm like, "Oh, that's the Wade. Wade, that's crazy!" And he like canceled. He's like, "What's up, Rook?" And, you know, I didn't have a name my first year. It was pretty much Rook. Oh. That was, like, my first moment because I was a big D-Wade fan. I was young. Um, 
did you has, have any of those guys given you good tips, good lessons on on how to be successful because they've had such long and, and good careers? Yeah, I remember one time that a funny story. I remember one time a funny story for a lot of these subjects. <laughs> but, um, myself and uh, I think I think it was with Justice Winslow, and we were about to go to a concert at the arena at the at the American Airlines arena, and actually we were leaving a concert because it was probably like 11 30 12 at night and we walk in the locker room as we we're about to leave and i see d wade in the locker room with like uh these things called normatex on his legs it's like compression sleeves for your legs and it like flushes them out and it's good for recovery and we're like yo what are you doing here and he was like i'm getting working and i was like okay but it's like super late he was like well he was about to go somewhere else you know just to like hang out but he said whenever he does stuff like that he always tries to go to the gym and get work in before he can go do fun stuff you know later and he told me that the game always gives you back what you put into it and so i was like wow that really makes sense and my motto that I grew up with, that I wrote this on a piece of paper on my wall, and I hung it on my wall by my door when I was a little kid, was you don't get here by just wishing. And Pete Maravich said that. And that was, like, my mantra that I always lived by. That's really good. Did uh, D-Wade give you any uh, style tips when you uh, became a professional player living in the big city of Miami? Mm. Ah, no. I am the father but there's a guy, uh, a guy named Lou All Day. Um, he was like my vet, my veteran. He like took me under his wing when I was and I got a lot of my style from him. Well, I will tell you, you're getting uh, major props from families about uh, your hairstyle. Um, it's very popular. So kudos. <laughs> um, so wanted to thank you again for being on here. I could, I have many more questions I could ask you. Um, and much more we could talk about. Maybe we could do this again um, at some point because um, our families have really enjoyed it. And wanted to thank you again for all the great things that you um, have done for our TAS families, the smiles you put on their faces, the way you've honored their loved ones, um, and the awareness that you brought to TAS. So every time you spread the word, um, you know, you're getting that word out to families that need us that may not have realized that we were here. So we're so grateful for that. And, um, and yeah, so wish you the best of luck with the rest of your quarantine and Same stay, to you guys. stay in shape and appreciate all the positive messages you shared here tonight with families too. I really think it's going to make a difference with a lot of people that were having a tough time with the quarantine. Um, Cause going in now, what to the eighth, eighth week for some people, it's, it's been, it's been a long time. Yes. But um, look forward to seeing you on a court again soon or in an arena. Um, or in a Reebok store, maybe, Josh, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, you take care, and uh, thank you again, and have a great night. Yeah, all right. Thank you. Thank you, guys, everyone who's watching. I love y'all. And uh, Yeah, I'm out of here. Thank you. All right. All right. Awesome. I thought you were going to close, so I just kept waiting, and you kept